Hey guys, and welcome to the video and another segment of hacking, modding, news, and info. This is a weekly segment that I do, well, normally weekly, that I release on Mondays. So there's been quite a few people over the last week or so who have joined the channel because of everything going on with the PS4. So for those who are new, this again is a weekly segment that I do usually on Mondays. However, last week's I could not get to it in time because there was so much stuff and information I wanted to put out regarding the PS4 that I said, well, you know, whatever, let's just wait till this week. So this video is going to have last week's information and this week's information combined. So two episodes in one. And I basically go over things that I think the viewers and subscribers of this channel would find helpful, useful, and informative in the hacking, modding, homebrew, and jailbreak scenes. It mainly focuses on consoles, but we also cover things like phones, maybe Raspberry Pi, PCs. We also cover the world of emulation. And we focus on mainly homebrews that come out that are new or new forms of jailbreak that come out, updates to popular homebrews, and things like that. So you'll get a feel for it as we go through this one. Although we're gonna have to go through this one pretty quick because there is a lot of information. Most of it is just updates of stuff that already exists. So just sit back, relax, grab some snacks, and let's talk about hacks. All right, guys, and let's kick things off over at the PS3 scene where we see a few things get updated. First, we have a port of Superplex, which is a game that came out in the 90s. It's now been ported over to the PS3 as well as the PS Vita. If I find some gameplay on it, I'll throw it up on the screen. It's a pretty simple puzzle game, but it's one of those things where it's easy to play, hard to master type games, and it's been ported over now uh, to multiple consoles so yeah if you want to give it a try the download link is here then the apollo save tool gets an update so i'm going to do a big tutorial on this soon especially since people seem to have issues with it but what i like with this latest update is that it apparently allows you um, to change the region now of the game save right from there so we're gonna have to try that out because that's a pretty big feature and then movie in and showtime each get an update each update is just something that's very minor uh just to tweak and improve the uh, users overall experience type thing nothing major but each one is now on 5.0.707 and next we have Vita DB, and anyone who has a jailbroken Vita should definitely know about this site. We've already covered it multiple times, and since the last time we've been here, there's only been a few things that have been updated or added, such as this game here, then the open Superplex, which we just talked about for the PS3, it's on Vita as well, the Vita album version 1.0, which is an image viewer for Vita, and then everything else here and down we've already covered previously, but this is a great site. It has like an infinite ocean worth of homebrews. So utilities and tools and games and things like that. And they're arranged in order from like the most recent update or newest releases down to the oldest. So every time something updates to a newer version, it makes its way to the top or when something comes out that is new and then the older stuff just gets pushed down. You can also use a tool like this, EasyVPK. When you install this into your Vita, it's actually linked to this whole Vita database. So you can look for tools and games and other homebrews and things like that right from your Vita and download them from there because it's connected right to this site. Now, when it comes to the PS4 scene, as we shift gears here, I'm not going to cover anything in this video because I've already done videos this past week. Over the last six days, I've put out five videos from the initial news of the exploit that was made public to which games will be supported with the upcoming 6.72 Kexploit, exploit, which ones might not be supported and which ones definitely will not work with that upcoming Kexploit. exploit. Uh, then I've given you a couple of status updates, one here and here, and also this video here 
for those who are interested in buying a brand new system, I go over which ones for sure are below 6.72. And then there's other little bits of information here and there scattered throughout these videos here. So if you haven't checked them out, maybe give them a look because there's a lot of information. And anytime something even remotely important happens, I'll be reporting it on the channel. All right, so we're done with the Sony consoles. Let's head on over to the Nintendo scene, starting with the Switch and a new release of a homebrew. This one is Switch TV. This allows you to install Twitch on your Switch and you can watch it right from your modded console. It's very easy to use. It's a .nro file, so you just install it into the Switch folder that's on your SD card and launch it through your homebrew menu and that's it. You are done. So you can see it here in action. Don't forget to read things here like the screenshot notification because it does tell you here that screen capture is force disabled. The page also gives you some other pertinent information. Come here to the releases. Make sure you grab the latest one. Again, there's the NRO right there. Incredibly easy to use. All right, and we're going to continue with the Switch. These next few things here are all Switch related and they're all things I've covered in the past. So let's start with an update to NX Activity Log. This activity log is a very detailed and comprehensive log of your playtime on your Switch and it displays various information and it can be sorted uh, in various ways. It's really helpful and useful. The latest version is 1.3.2 and you can get it right here from the releases. I believe it's just a regular NRO file. You just install it into your Switch like you do any other. Next, we have an update to NXHB Loader. This is what makes your NRO files work. It's a simple HBL.NSP file. Replace the one that's in your SD card with this one, and that's all you need to do. All right, moving along, we next have an update to Simple Mod Manager, something else that I've talked about here before in the past. This is for people who use the layered FS type mods on their games. You can change things like the textures, enhance colors, change the FPS and all kinds of stuff. In these latest updates, apparently they changed the interface and it looks much, much better. I really like what they've done here. They've also added an overlay menu type option. So if you use these various mods and you want to keep them nice and organized and have a way to activate and deactivate them easily and things like that, you can use this. Come over to the releases and there's an NRO file and an overlay a menu option. You can use either one or both. Normally when homebrews have both available, I just use them both. You're not going to hurt anything. Next, we have an update to Deep Sea now on 1.4.2. All they did here was pretty much just update all of the homebrews that are included that needed updating. Also, they removed their patched version due to DMC complaints. So before you had some zip files here that contain the patched versions of DeepSea, they've been removed, but you can add those sick patches the same way you did with Cosmos. And that's exactly what DeepSea is. It's a Cosmos clone, and I even think it's slightly better than Cosmos. For those of you who are still on Cosmos, I did a video that shows you how to transition over to Deep Sea. I'll do a follow up video soon. It should only be about four or five minutes long to show you how to install the SIG patches now manually. And we continue with the switch. Next, we have an update to Turnips. Now, Turnips is a turnip prices previewer for Animal Crossing's New Horizons. Now, I really don't play this game. Actually, I haven't played much of the Animal Crossing series in general, but I know this has a huge following and there's a lot of people into the game. So I have no idea about anything that has to do with turnips, but obviously if you have a modded system and you like the game, then this is something that you may find useful. There is a disclaimer. It says here that it does read the data from your game save on your SD card but it's a simple application. It's a .nro file that installs, again, just like any other. 
All right, the next couple of pieces of information regarding the Switch come from our friends over at Logic Sunrise. This site, again, is in French, so you may have to translate it over in order to be able to read it for yourself. I usually use the Google Translate extension on my browser. All right, so first, we have Troy DeJour NX looking like it's going to get replaced with Daybreak. Now, Daybreak will do the same thing. It allows you to manually install updates to your switch so you don't burn the fuses in case you want to ever downgrade. But this apparently allows you to do it even easier still. But more importantly, it is 100% open source. Troy DeJour NX is not. So you really don't know what's going on with your system behind the scenes. Maybe some information is being taken out. Who knows? I'm not saying that that's what's going on, but it could be possible because Troy DeJour NX is not open source. But this will be, it's being developed by the main developer of Atmosphere, Skyers M. So as soon as it comes out, I will let you guys know. And really quick here, I also want to acknowledge something regarding the Switch mod chips from Team Executor, as this post here indicates as well as on Logic Sunrise, and that is that Hecate is sometimes now bricking systems as well. Now we already knew that the homebrews Troy DeJour NX, Tinfoil Incognito, and now sometimes Hecate are bricking switches and switch lights when used in conjunction with these mod chips from Team Executor. And this post here acknowledges that right here on top, very first line. So yeah, we need to be careful, those of you out there who are getting these mod chips because these things were not fully tested before they hit the market. But the idea was they had to hit the market very quickly because the Marico keys leaked. So before, you know, a free solution or a much cheaper solution came out, Team Executor had to get the mod chips out there. So um, yeah, there wasn't proper testing done. And this is why every now and then we're seeing issues like this pop up where a homebrew is bricking the system. So let's just hope that we don't keep seeing these bricks happen with homebrews. And next we're gonna make a quick pit stop over at the 3DS scene where the only thing to report is an update to Twilight Menu. This is a popular emulator type deal that plays ROMs from various Nintendo systems like SNES, NES, the different Game Boys, but also plays ROMs from various Sega systems too, like Game Gear, Master System, the Mega Drive, and the Genesis, and they recently even added PC Engine and TurboGrafx-16 as well. When you come here to the releases and check out the latest update, you can see there what's new, some of the bug fixes and whatnot, and your 7-zip file that you'll need is right here. And now we move on to the GameCube. That's right, even the GameCube is getting a nod this week and a mention. Only one homebrew here that's been updated, but it is Swiss. This is an all-in-one, like all-purpose homebrew utility for your modded GameCube. This one has a lot of nice little features. You can see them right here. The requirements, the usage, the... Uh, general information that they have here is all pretty useful. You can go to the releases as usual, grab your 7-zip file from right there, and also check out the fixes, which is pretty much everything that this update consists of. A fix to the SD card compatibility and performance is the main thing, but they also fixed some issues with audio mixing and one with the Majora's Mask game as well. And next, we head on over to the world of emulation. The only thing we're gonna take a look at is the latest update to RPCS3, which is a PS3 emulator for your PC or Linux. Once again, over at Logic Sunrise, there's a post here with a couple of videos that show off some demoing of their latest work with this latest update. And it's pretty impressive how far they've come along. The uh, Little Big Planet game looks really good and it's running at around 30 frames most of the time. However, with the others up here, like with Uncharted and The Last of Us and stuff, the games are looking really good. Although there's quite a bit of dropped frame rates. So yeah, I, I know they mark it as playable. I really wouldn't be able to 
play them with all those dropped frame rates. Not quite yet, but it is getting there. It's made a lot of strides over the last couple of years or so. So yeah, hopefully they will continue to work on it. They're always releasing updates and let's hope it improves to the point where we get near perfect emulation. All right, and we are going to wrap things up in this video with two miscellaneous mentions. First, there's an update to Uncover. As advertised, it is the most advanced jailbreaking tool for iOS 11.0 through 13.5. The download link is here. When you scroll down, you got your installation guides here. And then down at the bottom, if you scroll a little bit more, you'll find what's new in this latest version. A few bug fixes also now they allow you to jailbreak even with a corrupted TMP directory. And lastly, we are here at HackerOne with Nintendo announcing that they are dropping or have dropped all of the bounties for their 3DS systems. Now, HackerOne is a site I've talked about before. I even did a video about it. So if you want to learn more, you can watch that. Hopefully I'll remember to put a link down in the description, but long story short, companies come here, they put up bounties for hackers to find bugs, exploit and vulnerabilities in their systems, their devices, their services, and things like that. Sony is here and they pay up to $50,000 for vulnerabilities that are found within the PS4. They've already paid one guy a $40,000 payout and that same guy a couple of months later, they paid him like a $25,000 payout but those vulnerabilities and those exploits that he found, those unfortunately never became public. Anyway, Nintendo is here announcing that they will no longer uh, do the bounties for 3DS, but Switch bounties do continue. However, even though the Switch is a hot little console, regardless of what you think about it, it's sold over 60 million units in just a little over three years. The top bounty they're offering is just $20,000 way, way less than Sony. And that is going to do it for this week's episode, guys. You know I appreciate you watching. And if you found anything here informative, useful, helpful, or maybe just entertaining, or you just want to throw some love or appreciation to the channel, of course, the best way to do that, as always, is just to hit that like button and maybe subscribe if you haven't already. Much love going out to everyone. Be careful out there. Be safe, but have fun. And we will see you on the next one.